Hi, I'm Melinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to help you overcome a tricky formulation challenge when formulating with some visual beads. And I'm going to be showing you specifically how to create a beautifully viscous and stable, sulfate-free foaming cleanser. Here's the product we'll be creating. And you'll notice I've used some beautiful bright blue beads in a very high quantity to show you that we can stabilize these effectively in a sulfate-free system. Let me show you how. Okay, first things first, we've got our water measured out here. Now normally, I would mix my surfactants and my water together and then add my thickening agent. But in this case, I'm using a very special material. There's a couple of grades of this material, but I'm using this one for its stabilizing ability. Carbapol Aqua SF2. This is what's going to help me create this beautifully stable system, even with a very high input of beads. Now you'll notice that the Carbapol Aqua SF2 appears quite milky looking when I first add it. And of course that's exactly how it appears uh, in its raw form. But it does become a beautifully clear thickener when it's properly added to a system. And you can see that's a beautifully clear system there that we're creating. Now, of course, in an emulsion, uh, you use the waxes to create the crystalline structure support. But in a surfactant system, we are relying on a very stable polymeric network to hold these beads in place. Now that we've dispersed our polymer, I am going to be adding my solubilized fragrance. Now you can pick another material. I've used this particular material for its super fatting properties as part of my surfactant system. And I'm adding it first so that we can minimize the bubbles that form when we add our surfactant materials. So this is acting as a solubilizer and super fatting agent and my fragrance is in there as well and that of course helps keep a nice stable clear system. It's not looking very clear yet but it will. Next I'm adding my surfactants which I've just combined gently. And you can start to see as the polymer is dispersing it is becoming clearer. One of the things I love about this particular polymeric material is it is very effective with back acid thickening, which means I can adjust the pH later without impacting the polymeric network. And in fact, when I do that, it will become very clear and very thick. Now, already you can see it's clearing up nicely and it's also becoming quite thick but it's not enough of a network yet. So what I'm going to do now is check and adjust the pH so that I can get the full viscosity and stabilizing benefits from my polymer and then I'm going to add these very beautiful blue eco beads. Now that we have our stable polymeric network, we can add our eco beads. Now don't worry if especially your lab sample looks a little aerated and milky on the day you make it. It will settle out within the next day to be this beautiful clear solution. Now I have needed to use uh, quite a high quantity of Carbapol Aqua SF2 in this formula for two reasons. Number one, it's sulfate free. 
and anyone who's been formulating and tried a few different surfactant materials will know that formulating sulfate free is particularly harder than when you are formulating with sulfates, getting a nice thick formula but also helping to stabilise this quantity of beads is particularly difficult sulfate free which is why I've chosen to show you how to do it in this video today. It hasn't been easy, it took quite a few goes to get just the right percentage uh, but I wanted to demonstrate with a particularly high loading of beads so that you can see how to stabilise even a very high concentration of beads in your sulfate free formula. So it will appear a bit milky today, also in the lab, uh, especially when adjusting pH. I did introduce a bit of air that's largely unavoidable in this lab situation unless I'm using some vacuum equipment, uh, but that will settle overnight. So by the next day, I will have this beautiful clear sample. So there you have it. Now as I mentioned, it took a few samples for me to get this just right because it is a difficult system. But I hope today you've seen some great tips on how to make your formulating easier, especially when challenged with a more difficult system. Happy formulating!